The first video I did was more of a demonstration of the capabilities between the two different hardware devices. I'm not trying to pit Premiere Pro against Edius. I just wanted to use two different software programs so people could realize if you use Final Cut Pro 10, Sony Vegas, or Avid, you may or may not get the same results that I did with Premiere or with Edius. I want to state that the Canopus ADVC 110 is a standard definition product only. The Blackmagic Design Intensity Shuttle is both standard definition and high definition. If you look at the top of the Canopus ADVC 110, you'll see that both Premiere and Edius can take a standard definition timeline or sequence and output it to a standard definition monitor. The ADVC 110 should be able to do that with any software program out on the market that can recognize FireWire devices. When we look at outputting high definition to standard definition, we see Premiere Pro gets a yes, but Edius gets a no. Premiere has a yes in parentheses. It can actually output interlaced video files or timeline sequences, whatever you want to call them, out to the broadcast monitor using the Canopus ADVC110, but you might find it's better to use it in CPU only mode. You'll still get a pretty decent amount of real time special effects. If you're not using an interlaced timeline, you might be able to get away with using GPU mode. It just depends. I think it actually plays a little bit better in CPU only mode. But if you've got 4K, you can easily scale that down to like quarter and eighth resolution. And using the Canopus ADVC 110, it'll look just fine on a standard definition monitor. If we look at playing a 4K timeline or sequence to standard definition using Premiere Pro, Premiere does get a yes. Edius gets a no once again. As I stated, you might be better off using software only mode but you still will get some decent real-time effects, as I stated, using 4K because you can easily put, run it at like 1 8th resolution. It'll still look good on a standard definition monitor. If we look at 4K at a 16 by 9 aspect ratio and outputting that to high definition, both Premiere and Edius get a no. But that's because the Canopus ADVC 110 cannot output to high definition. You can hook it up to a high definition monitor with the S video, but you're still only going to get standard definition resolution. With the Canopus ADVC 110, we can take any resolution and any aspect ratio and output it to standard definition using Premiere. You can actually make a flash banner that's like 1800 pixels by say 250 pixels. And you can actually preview it on the broadcast monitor using the Canopus ADVC 110. Edius does not have that type of function when using the Canopus ADVC 110. As far as using the Canopus ADVC 110 to output any resolution and any aspect ratio to high definition, both Premiere and Edius get a no because the ADVC 110 cannot output to high definition. It can't do 1920 by 1080 or 1280 by 720 p It can only do standard definition resolution. So that's a hardware limitation once again. If we look at the Black Magic Design Intensity Shuttle, as you can tell, Premiere Pro and Edius can both play standard definition video to a standard definition broadcast monitor just fine. The Intensity Shuttle is designed to do that. With the Intensity Shuttle, both products can take a high definition timeline or sequence and output, output it to a standard definition monitor. The hardware was actually designed to be used that way. So both Edius and Premiere can take full advantage of the Blackmagic Design Intensity Shuttle. I mentioned the Blackmagic Design Intensity Shuttle can work with high definition as well as standard definition. But I want people to realize that it really wasn't designed to work with 4K timelines. So that's why they both have a no with an underline when it comes to 4K, the 16 by 9 aspect ratio to standard definition. It can't do it, and I think it's more of a hardware limitation. But I wrote an underline underneath the no because it is possible with a driver update. It would be possible for maybe Premiere Pro and Edius to actually output a 4K timeline to standard definition resolution. 
I want to let people know the Blackmagic Design Intensity Shuttle is not really designed to take a 4K timeline in the 16 by 9 aspect ratio and output it to a high definition monitor. Eddie has got a no. Premiere Pro did get a yes, but that's only because Premiere Pro has a couple extra options when you're outputting to the Blackmagic Design product. Neither Premiere Pro or Edius can take any resolution or any aspect ratio and output it to standard definition. I wrote no with the underline underneath it because it's possible with the driver update, it's something that could be done, I think, but it's just not going to do it at this point in time. So that's why I got the no with the underline. If we want to take any resolution and any aspect ratio to high definition, I did put a yes for Premiere. Edius obviously has a no. As you look at the yes with Premiere, I do have red parentheses around it because you can do weird aspect ratios at like 4K and even other def different resolutions, but it's probably not going to come out right. I mean, you can't just set up something like 4,000 lines of resolution by like 600 lines of resolution and expect the Blackmagic Design product to rasterize that image correctly so that the aspect ratio is correct. It just won't do it. If it's 16 by 9 aspect ratio, I don't doubt it could take a 6K timeline or even an 8K timeline and actually output it to the Blackmagic Design Intensity Shuttle without any problems. It's just if you're trying to do any resolution, any aspect ratio, the Blackmagic Design product along with Premiere Pro, it'll output it as I stated, but it just won't look correct unless you actually have a monitor that's you know, set at that weird aspect ratio. I wanted to actually mention that the main reason why I did this video is because I was wondering, hey, Premiere won't let me do some of the stuff I want to do, whether I'm using a DV converter or whether I'm using the Blackmagic Design Intensity Shuttle. And I just wanted to see how would another software program compare? I just want to let people know I'm not all that efficient with the EDIA software. I actually just downloaded the trial version so it is very possible some of you can get the EDIA software to take more advantage of the hardware than I was able to do. I just want to take a second to let people know the way the Blackmagic Design Intensity Shuttle used to work with Premiere Pro CS 4.0 and even Premiere Pro CS 5.5 is you would install the driver for the Intensity Shuttle and then on top of that your sequences would have to be Blackmagic Design sequences in order to get any output to the device. Ever since Premiere Pro CS 6.0, they implemented the Mercury Transmit. So you could take any like 4K timeline or any HD timeline and actually get output to the Blackmagic Design Intensity Shuttle. I want to say with the EDIA software, I wasn't actually going in and using a Blackmagic Design sequence. So I think a lot of software has changed in the way they used to use third-party hardware. I'm going to use this portion of the video to talk about the pros and cons of both products. I'm going to start with the ADVC-110 by Canopus. The ADVC-110 did come with a FireWire cable. And as long as you have a six pin firewire cable, it will actually get enough power where you don't need an AC adapter. However, if you're going to use a four pin firewire cable, then you would need to purchase the AC adapter. The Intensity Shuttle Pro by Blackmagic Design does not need an AC adapter because it gets its power through the USB 3.0 cable, which is actually provided in the box as well. So both companies were good at providing the appropriate cable needed to make the device work. I want to let people know the Canopus ADVC-110 can be bought for as little as $180 if you shop around. The Blackmagic Design Intensity Shuttle, the USB 3.0 version, can be had just about anywhere for about $180. However, if you want the Thunderbolt version, it'll probably cost about $210 to maybe $230. And it will not come with a Thunderbolt cable, so you'd also have to purchase the cable. So realistically, the USB version is quite a lot less expensive than the Thunderbolt version. I just want to state for the record once again that the analog to digital video converter by Canopus, just like all other analog to digital video converters on the market, can only deal with standard definition. 
you can only capture video at standard definition and you can only play back video at standard definition. Now, Premiere Pro did allow me to take a high definition timeline and even a 4K timeline and output it using the ADVC 110 by Canopus at standard definition resolution. I could take the S video out and hook it up to a high definition monitor, but I'm only going to get standard definition resolution. The Intensity Shuttle can actually take a high definition timeline and output it in high definition resolution. If you have Final Cut Pro 10 and you're wondering, could you take a high definition timeline or a fit 4K timeline and make use of the ADVC 110 to output it in standard definition to a broadcast monitor? That I don't know. I want to state for the record that if you were to get the Intensity Shuttle or the ADVC 110, depending on where you purchase it, you may not be able to return it. And some places that let you return it may take a 10% restocking fee. So you have to understand you're going to pay for the shipping and handling to your door, although some of them may have free shipping and handling. And then you may have to pay for shipping and handling back because they're not going to pay for the shipping and handling if it just doesn't work out with your particular software. So there are some risks involved. It's not like a trial version of software where you get to use it for 30 days, no risk. You know, there would be a little bit of risk on your part if you did try and purchase some of these products and it did not work out for you. The Intensity Shuttle by Blackmagic Design, you do have to install like third-party drivers for it in order for it to work. Otherwise, it's not going to work. It's kind of a little bit trickier than the analog to digital video converters to work because it doesn't just do standard definition it will do high definition you've got to make sure you've got the right port enabled in order for it to capture you've got to make sure you know you got 30 frames per second or do you want to capture it 1280 um, by 720 do you want it interlaced so it doesn't pick up things automatically you've really got to know what you're doing in order to get the intensity shuttle to work the Canopus ADVC 110 is a little bit easier to use. If your main goal is to just take super VHS tapes and input them into the computer, the ADVC 110 would probably be much easier. But on the other hand, the Intensity Shuttle by Blackmagic Design is $180. The ADVC 110, you can pick it up for $180. The Intensity Shuttle will just do so much more. And like I said, it's got the component, it's got HDMI, it's got S-Video. Both of these, the front and back look identical. It's got the same amount of inputs as it has outputs on both of these particular products. I should mention that the Intensity Shuttle does come with a program called Media Express. It's a really limited video editing system. It's probably even worse than Windows Movie Maker. But it will let you capture with the actual Intensity Shuttle and playback the video clips you captured to a broadcast monitor.